There's Funky Almedina with me uh, on this Hello. live stream. Um, well, today we have a very important um, guest uh, who is a drummer, who is a very important guy. Oh, God, wait. <laughs> Sorry about that. Facebook anxious. Um, anyway. Uh, we're gonna have a little interview with this guy, um, and yeah, want to say something? Yeah, like we can't wait to have him on. I see we have some people already watching us, so yeah, bring him on. Okay, let's bring him. Yay! Hello. How Hello are you? There. We're very good. This is crazy, right? This is your first broadcast. I'm excited to be on it. I'm I'm nervous because it's your first broadcast. Um, Can you imagine that? for having me? You know, we you know we call this in America. We call this a slow news day when you get a guy like me on. Oh, well. <laughs> it's a joke, everybody. It's a joke. My wife's yeah, kicking yeah. me under the table now. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think we should also add can so we can introduce him yes um so there it is can hey mike it's so awesome to be here man it's so good to see you well thanks for having me thanks for having me so first of all I think, uh, I think for some of my um people that are, might be watching this is your you guys sort of were doing um little instagram lives together talking and singing and things like that um, I met That's you right. all via the uh, Ryan Roxy podcast in the trenches and Stefan Adika's uh, Coffee Talk, and you guys were inspired yeah. to do this and and have asked me to be on. So, so for everybody who's watching this, this is your first time doing this. This is show number one of yeah. Oki TV, and I'm your first guest. Yeah. That's, That's right. excellent. <laughs> Um, it's pretty it's cool. It's a very awesome um, experience for us to have you was the first guest because you know you're so honored. You're a you know? very yeah. great guy. You know you're big. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a pleasure to have you here, and we will have much fun. I hope. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, All righty. Yeah, So what's up? Yeah, we have some people here. Um, I think we should, um, I don't know, uh, see if anyone has any questions. 
right? Oh, you guys have any okay. questions? You guys have any questions? Huh. We do. Because I got, I got questions and comments Steph. for you. If you don't have questions oh, for me, I can answer <laughs> you. I've been doing the, I've been doing Steph, I've been Stefan's sidekick for the last five weeks of quarantine. So I got, <laughs> I can talk. Yeah. All right. That's right. You were on Stefan like a few moments ago, like a few minutes ago. How was that? It was great. We had Ron uh, Bumblefoot on, and Stefan was so excited. He kept going and going and going. I almost didn't make the show here today. But we I got him to wrap right. it up. I texted him, but it was great. Ron was great. He talked uh, and played a lot. It was great. Um, Stefan does this thing in the morning, Coffee Talk. It's just a bunch of friends getting together uh, because of this format that we have. And, um, right. and uh, 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 it's just, just guys hanging out, you know, and, and gals hanging out and, and whomever comes on. So it's just very casual. Now, you are, are you, you come from Ryan Roxy's camp. Ryan Roxy and I, for who, who don't know, uh, played in a band, Dad's Porn and Mag and Roxy 77 together. Yeah. And, uh, Ryan Not plays guitar. Yeah. Yes, guitar right. in Alice Cooper. But he's also got Roxy's in the Trenches, and, and he also has a, a guitar course. Are you taking his guitar course? Is that how you know Ryan? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. The Kickstarter campaign you're talking about, I guess? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I pledged for it, too. And uh, okay. he's introducing a system uh, 12 guitar method, which is uh, which spans over like 12 weeks. Uh, so mm -hmm. you, uh, he's more focused on, you know, uh, get uh, everyone uh, inspired to pick up the instrument and get playing, you know. Don't That's just cool. uh, keep it there and keep looking at it and just keep on dreaming about it, like actually pick it up and get started, you know. So it's, it's really amazing and he's doing a great job. The entire Roxy team has done a great job, man. So the lessons are you know, quite simple and amazing. Right. You know what's funny is there's a, a I, Ryan's one of my favorite guitar players to play with, especially as a drummer. Me too, yeah. Um, what's cool is we were always a trio of, of people, uh, you know, bass, guitar, drums, and then Ryan would sing. Also, Tiger Army is a trio. It's Nick, Mike, and George. A. Right. You know, we're a trio. Trios are, it's really crazy. Trios are my least favorite situations to play in because sometimes when um, the guitar player goes for a solo, uh, the rhythm guitar goes away. But a guy like right. Ryan Roxy's solos are so musical in the sense of um, they're solos and they shred, but there's a melody to there's a melody to his his playing and 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 like I said, Ryan is really ultimately one of my favorite guys to play. Guys like Ryan, but Ryan's the only guy I've played with like that. Because when I was playing in a band called Warren, we had two guitar players, we had a lead and a rhythm. Right. So nothing ever dropped off whoever was soloing. So um, right. Um, it's just kind of funny, but Ryan's Ryan's very musical and and, uh, and he sings and he's talented. He's now he's got his TV show and all that stuff on on YouTube. It's it's amazing. That's um, true. But I'm glad you're playing. Right. That. That's really cool. Um, that's that's amazing. That's great. You know what? You know what? Ryan saw my Instagram post. Like mm -hmm. uh, we tagged you and all, and he mm -hmm. did reply. Like he commented on the post. Do you want to see that post? Do you want to see that comment? Sure. Can you pop it on? You got the technology? I'm, yes. I'm going to share that comment right now. Okay. Okay. You know, what's funny is I don't see any comments uh, from anybody like on this chat. So you'll have to tell me or put them up or questions or whatever. But anyways, uh, uh, whatever. I'm, I'm here to answer. Right, I'm here to tell. Um, <laughs> we can see on Facebook the questions and people talking to okay. us. Kitty is here. Um, so happy... Hello guys, so happy you're doing this, we're back in Krill. Thank you, Kitty, it's a pleasure to be here with him. Um, it's a great guy. Wait. Thank you, that was cool. That that was a song called Dark and Lonely Night. Um, and yeah. that was really cool. We, we did that video in, a, in the desert in California in a, not a junkyard, but um, this guy collected a lot of really cool stuff. We were in the back of a, of a, like a, a vintage style um, bus tour bus thing that we set up, and I was the, the steering wheel was right behind me. It was very interesting. We shot um, uh, for a couple of hours, and then Nick, uh, our singer, spent the rest of the night there doing all the other shots. Um, but it was pretty fun. Uh, pretty pretty cool video. 
Yeah, that was that was great. Um, wait, uh, great to see that. Um, you know, this clip is very very good. The song is very good. Um, and how did you start on Tiger Army? How did I start on Tiger Army? I actually had rented and tuned drums for them on previous records. Um, I have a business in, in Los Angeles that I rent drums out and I tune on records and I work with many different bands and that's sort of my, my business when I'm not touring or playing drums. So um, what had happened, we were, uh, we were doing the third record, Ghost Tigers Rise. We were working, I, I had set up and tuned and a couple of days later at midnight, I got a phone call from Jeff Kresge, who was the bass player at the time, asking me if I was able to come in and play drums on the record. What had happened is the drummer, six months prior to uh, to this recording, was in a, um, he was, his name is Fred Hill, and Fred um, was in a, like a robbery gone, uh, like a home invasion robbery gone wrong, uh, for everybody, where Fred was shot three times, once in the in the back and the, and the the hip and and the head, he survived the shooting, but did not really. Six months later, was not really firing on all cylinders to record this record, which is um, the third record, uh, Ghost Tigers Rise, and this is what that record I just happen to have it because I'm in my oh, wow. room. Um, this record. Uh, so awesome. Jeff had Jeff had called me and asked me cool. if I could come down and play on the record, and I and I thought, well, for sure, I, I could probably play on more of the rock stuff because I came from more of the rock world versus the psychabilly or rockabilly world, which is a different yeah. style of drumming. And um, I thought, well, let me do the rock songs, and then maybe I'll have to get somebody else to do the other songs. It turns out I did the whole record, and. Um, uh, six months later, they were they were they were going out on a tour. Fred still wasn't quite recovered. Um, they asked me to do the 2004 Vans Warp Tour, and that's Vans Tennis Shoes. It's a warp tour that goes around the, the country here in the States. That's actually where I met my wife, who also plays drums. She's in a band called Groovy Ghoulies at the time. Uh, we started, uh, we met there, and then we oh, started nice. dating later, and then got married later, and then uh, here we are. But, um, but yeah, so it was sort of out of uh, misfortune for Fred. But I did that tour, and then uh, when that tour was done, that work tour was done, I um, I was playing in a band called Warrant as well, which is completely different than Tiger Army. It's an 80s like rock band, like uh, Motley Crue or Rat or Bon Jovi. Um, and uh, I went back to Warrant to, to play for them. And then uh, a couple years ago, in 2015, Nick, um, Nick had... Uh, asked me if I could play a couple shows in this festival thing that he does. It's not a festival, it's a, it's a, it's called October Flame, and it was gonna be, I would be the special guest. We would play the majority so of the songs off of this record that I played on it. And uh, I had this, out of this blue, I said, yeah, I'll do it. And so two, two shows in 2015 turned into All The Way Now in 2020, and I'm still playing. And, and we also recorded another record called right. Dark Paradise. Um, and we did a uh, we did a Lana Del Rey cover of her song Dark Paradise. Oh, wow. um, if you know Lana Del Rey, and then we have yeah. um, this new record out, Retro Future, that we're touring on. So um, or touring or, or postponed to be touring after COVID nineteen and everything gets started up again. So yeah, so it's weird. I had um, I had the, this, the two shows turned into me just playing with the guys again, and I and I I love playing in this band. It's it's. Um, it's cool because it's 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 so different from from where I came from, and I mean, but I was I mean I was a part of this, but um, it's just a, it's just really cool, and and we're we're a yeah. psychabilly band or a punk rockabilly band, but we're really a rock band because there's a lot of songs that really span. It's not just super heavy hardcore stuff. It's 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 everything now. There's a little country. There's a little swing. There's a little western. There's a little shuffle. There's a little this. There's a little punk rock. There's a little rock. There's a little everything. There's something for everybody. And what's really crazy, we, we had um, the, uh, an opportunity. Uh, we did this, this, this show called Last Call with Carson Daly, and we were on two episodes, and we had two songs on each episode back in 2016. And what's really crazy about that, it's a late night show here, and you might know Carson Daly because he's um, like, like was on TV and whatever. Yeah. He's First of all, everybody needs to know that 
that Rebecca, you're in Brazil. Ken, you're in India. Uh, El Medina, you're right. in Bosnia. So this is like international. I'm in Burbank, California. So and you're and you in LA. All, Mike yes, is in yes. LA. Yeah. So this is crazy how all this is working. Um, and I'm so glad to. to maybe I'm talking too much about it, but for the people that don't know, no. now I lost my my my, my not at all. Train of thought. But we did the show Carson Daly's uh, last call, and um, it's crazy because when we were touring after that, we had older people come to the shows and older people come to the shows and say, I saw you on Carson Daly. So um, it's funny, Tiger Army is not the type of band that gets played on the radio. Um, we don't get really the MTV. It's this underground thing that if people find us, uh, they, they and first of all, everyone's welcome, whatever, wherever you're from, whatever you're into, whatever that is, That's right. um, you're all welcome. If it resonates to you, you're a part of the Tiger Army and, and, and the Tiger Army never dies. And we're, we're still going so um i hope all of you guys out there that don't know about tiger army really check it out and uh and uh, uh give it a, give it a listen i think there's something for everybody anyways yeah that's yeah, pretty exactly. cool. amazing tiger army <laughs> oh. i mean okay. uh, um, no, it's, I'm it's, going, crazy. I... it's crazy how, how much can you see how much you impact so many people from all around the world like i'm brazil he, 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 he is in India and she's in Bosnia. So it's different parts of the world, but you, we are the same way we are fan of yours and of Tiger Armor Army. So it's it's just nuts how, how we can it's just like connect. Ryan said, you know, imagine your reality. Yeah, this is what Ryan says. Exactly. <laughs> So this is what Ryan's comment was on my post. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're cool. obviously going to have Ryan and Stefan on at some point. And maybe at some point you can have all three of us on it. It could get crazy. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. I'm already now, shaking I'm... just because of you. Right. I can't even imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I'm gonna say a word now, and I mean, it's, it's the name of a person, and I know you're gonna talk about him, like, so the name is uh, Matt Sorum. Oh, Matt Sorum. Never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, uh, Matt, okay, well, here was, this is, okay, this is kind of what's funny too is uh matt sorum is, was the drummer of guns and roses but when, when uh when i was younger i was his roommate as he got into uh guns and roses i i actually used to play a long time ago on a cruise ship um and matt encouraged me to get off the cruise ship and uh stay in town so i can do auditions because if, if you're out on a cruise ship for six months or three months or whatever um you can't audition for bands and, and at the time back in the day the scene was happening there was a lot going on and there were always auditions happening so um right. i was out on a ship somewhere in the mediterranean or the caribbean or wherever uh, mm -hmm. uh you couldn't do these auditions um but what's really what's really funny uh about matt is um, we were roommates. I, I paid him rent. Uh, he we lived in Laurel really? Canyon. We rented one of Duff's. He rented one of Duff's houses. Duff had a few houses. Duff lived at the top of the hill. We lived in the middle of the hill. And then there was Vent, the famous Ventura Boulevard. But uh, no, I lived with Matt, and, and that's um, and I worked at a music store, and I was playing top forty gigs, uh, which is cover music. Uh, I was playing country gigs. I was playing weddings. I was playing bar mitzvahs. Um, uh, I was playing in these country bars at night where people would smoke and drink beers and, and obviously it's a bar, but you could smoke in the bars. And I, I used to be so tired from working that I could lean back against the chair, close my eyes and play, do, 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 kind of fall asleep and wake up at the end of the song and then go to the next song. I was just exhausted for 50 bucks a night, but that's when I lived, lived with Matt. Um, so uh, uh, a couple months later, they were doing a record called, finishing a record called The Spaghetti Incident. And Matt sort of had a 
drum tech named uh, Timmy Doyle. And Timmy was in Texas with his wife. They were having a baby. He needed me for mm -hmm. a week in the studio to work with him. I, I first time in the studio, but I knew how to tune drums because I had worked at a music store, was working at a music store, doing these top 40 gigs, country gigs. <clears throat> and um, I went in the studio with him. I made more money in the week than I would have in six months working at the store. He said, quit the store. You can be my drum tech in town. I'm going to do drum sessions and whatever. So, um, so yeah. I was living with him. Uh, I, I was drum teching for him. Uh, I was still playing gigs. I was always playing gigs and trying to, you know, you know, do it, you know, do the music. And because uh, I love Amazing. drumming, I love everything about it. So yeah. So Matt, Matt is like the big brother I've always wanted but never had officially. But he's my big brother, and I, I look up to him. I, I respect him, and he's done so much for me in my career and my family. Right. We love him. We love him, like you do. <laughs> and I how did you end didn't up do any cool? questions. Yo, ask some questions. Ask me a question. Who wants a question? Yeah, I, I mean, um, so um, uh, besides Matt, who's also your biggest yes. inspiration in music? Gosh, you know, there's so many, so many drummers. You know, it's funny. It's like a lot of drummers say, "Oh, John Bonham is my my idol," and John Bonham is in Led Zeppelin and whatever. But um, yeah, I really like, speaking of Matt Sorum, I, I really like um, this guy named Mickey Curry. And, and Mickey Curry was a session drummer from New York who um, played on a lot of this, this old 70s, 80s band called Hall & Oates. He also, um, he also played on the cult Sonic Temple. And then uh, uh, I can't remember the record after that, but that's the tour Matt got in the cult with Matt Sorum, uh, toured on the Sonic Temple record, but Mickey Curry played drums. I love Mickey Curry. I love Stuart Copeland from the police. Stuart Copeland was my first concert I ever saw with my cousins in Canada. We were visiting, first time I was ever out of the, out of the country. Um, we saw the, the police picnic 83 in um, CNE Stadium in Toronto. That, that guy's amazing. I really um, love his drumming. I play nothing like him, but I'm inspired. That's the other thing too is, you can take inspiration from so many different drummers um, and you could try to do what they're doing. And some guys who technically can do it, I can't technically do it that mm -hmm. way, but but even the guys that can technically do it, it never sounds like the drummer. So I always take a pick, pick, pick a little from everybody. Um, and it's funny, I see a lot of guys playing and I see all these uh, like busy fills or chops and I'm just, it just doesn't, doesn't inspire me. I don't play that way. I play for the song, um, which is, sounds cliche because that every drummer thinks they play to the song but um i actually in tiger army i play to nick you know nick has um got a really great um uh pace of how he wants things done and uh played and sometimes um if we're playing like i remember we were the first time we i went to europe with with tiger army which is a couple years ago in 2016 um nick was saying that, that we sometimes we get circle slam pits going you know, we're in America where they do the pits, the mosh pits. Yeah, yeah. But in Europe, they don't really do mosh pits, but they do the, this bounce. So instead of playing things faster like we would do in the States, we would slow things down a little bit because they're not going to pit. And um, he's got such a great gauge to how a, a tempo of a song or the mood of the song. So I'm constantly watching him for direction to what we're going to do in the moment for that song, for that night, for that crowd, for that city, for that country, whatever. So um, it's it's pretty pretty interesting uh, way of, of playing for the, the artist you play for. You know what I mean? Not, yeah. you know, the old saying in America, drummers, we'd read, the beat is where I say it's at. You know, I'm the drummer. You know, it's like, no, it's not. It's where the singer wants it at. He's got to deliver. He's got to... Um, He's got to get the vocals out. He's got to get the mood out. He's got to push the crowd. He's reading the crowd. I'm sitting back in one area. He can move around the whole stage, and I'm in one area, and I'm I'm gauging myself off of him, and uh, and it's it's a challenge every night. He's made me such a better drummer playing this band, and and I feel like we have uh, uh, Georgia on bass and 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 Nick on guitar, and we we've been playing now together for about five years, and it's like it's really great. And what really sucks is we were. One, we were two weeks away from going on tour. One week before our tour, uh, we had to cancel, but we were rehearsing all the way up until then. And then we realized this COVID-19 thing is serious. We've got yeah. to cancel and uh, not cancel, but we postponed. Um, so now we're just waiting to 
see when we can do this, you know? I mean, I don't know when we can do anything. I, don't, I think everybody's sort of on hold. And I think that's what why everybody's doing these these interviews and these videos and these lives. You can yeah, see any yeah, artist yeah. in their in their living room or whatever. So anyways, if that does that answer your question? I'm sorry. My wife's kicking yeah, me under okay. the table there. It does. Um, but also, uh, are you going to have any tour dates in um, Europe? You know, it's it's funny. Um, we, yeah, I mean, we wanted to come this year. It's just, we were working on dates and we were hopefully having, while we were out on tour now, we're supposed to be on tour or we're just supposed to be finishing now. But um, yeah, we, we wanted to. Uh, it's just everything is just completely on hold. And now what the problem is, everybody that's been postponed, all the other bands, um, obviously, they're the massive, huge bands like um, uh, uh, Kiss and 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 uh, and Alice Cooper that play bigger arenas. So all of those venues have to be scheduled at a certain time for a tour and a sporting event if they have that. If that comes back, so our venues are around a thousand that we play, or fifteen hundred. So all of those bands that play the a thousand or fifteen hundred venues. Um, have to book the shows, so it's 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 crazy. I really feel bad for our our, our booking mm -hmm. agent, our manager. I know Nick's dealing with all this stuff, and we're just all sort of. And then we're just all sort of on hold now. We're just completely everybody. The world is on hold, you know. So um, yes, we will get we will get there for sure. I now I don't know if we're going to get to Bosnia, but but um, it would it would be. Um, Definitely Europe, but it would be great to get there if we could get there. Where you're yeah. at, guy in India, I don't even, I know Tiger Army's never played in India, but we did play in Brazil in 2016. We were there. We played, um, we did a South American oh, wow. tour, which was incredible. It was incredible. Oh, wow. That's cool. I'm going to search about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's someone, uh, there's a friend called Almir who asked you a question that is what is your favorite movie can we put up the comment is it, is it just that simple what is my favorite movie um, yeah i, I don't really... know it's because he, he he likes a lot of movies he's like like a oh, director cool. of movies. oh it's her oh, cool. friend, like her friend yeah yeah, I would like, uh, yeah have you guys ever heard of a movie called cape fear cape yeah. fear Check out Cape Fear. It's kind of spooky. It's with Robert De Niro, and um, oh, okay, and it's it's really great. I, I, that's one of my favorite movies. It's not a it's not a happy movie, but and it's a little it's it's a it's a it's a little bit of a of a of a drama, and, a, and a, it's a little it's a little bit of a horror at the same time. It's a little bit of a, you could have a bad nightmare after yeah. it, uh, depending Sounds on cool. uh, what your thoughts are when you go to bed. But check out Cape Fear uh, with De Niro. There was an original one done in like the 50s and then they redid this one like in the late 80s. But it's Cape as in uh, a Cape yeah, and yeah. Fear as in the band. He said he knows what's the what's the name. Oh, cool. What, what's the movie. Cool. <laughs> I guess the, 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 one of the movies that just gave me like goosebumps and made me not sleep for like weeks was uh, the Babadook movie. That is not like that. It's not that scary. But I don't know. You just imagine him on your room or whatever you are. So it's it's crazy how our mind works. I don't know. Yeah. So uh, Kitty has a question for Mike. Uh, Kitty, uh, have you seen uh, Whip Whiplash the movie? You know what? I haven't oh. seen Whiplash. And 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 you know the funny thing about that is I haven't seen it. You know, I should see it, but when it came out, basically Whiplash is about a drummer and a drum teacher, and the guy, the drum teacher is supposedly really hard about it, hard on the drummer. I saw the previews, and I'm I'm in the music business, and it looked to me like you could have replaced the drummer. He could have been a tennis player. He could have been a guitar player. He could have been a baseball player, an athlete, or whatever. And then you have this guy. It could have been, you could have just replaced it with anybody and, and you have this situation. To be honest with you, I'm in the real world and and, and I, I don't know, I, I should watch it, but I'm not going to watch it. But I know about Whiplash and I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be an hour and a half of my, my life I'll ever get back if I watch it. I've seen enough of the clips. Yeah. And, and, the, and, and the guy in the movie, the teacher guy, he does these commercials 
for farmers insurance or something like that here in the, in the, in the United States. And I can't, I can't, I couldn't just, if, if I saw him trying to be a hard ass, he's kind of a, a goofy guy in these commercials. I, I don't know. I just, I couldn't buy it. Anyways, that's my thoughts on that. <laughs> I'll never be on awesome. the Whiplash podcast now that I've said that. <laughs> just say hi to you. Uh, she's watching too. Who's that? Who, who's watching? I guess it's, I guess it's from or Stefan uh, show or from Instagram. But, What's the person's yeah. name? Federica Roba. Oh yes, yeah. I, I think her. I think her stage name or Instagram name is Fetty Rock. Fetty Rock. Yeah. That's yeah, another yeah. thing too, yeah. which is really yeah. crazy. Rock. Yeah, that's true. You know what's really also, crazy? What? Go on. Gorak, nineteen eighty-five. That's right. He also said, "Hi, Mike." Thomas Adam Gorak. Yeah. You know what's funny is. Um, Everybody has these names. Like, I can't, of course, I can't think of them now, but um, like uh, Fetty Rock and uh, there's a Kath Grant one. And 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 I thought, well, is it Kathy and, and Grant? Are they sharing? Are they sharing <laughs> a, a thing? But it's not. It's Kathy Grant because you would follow each other on Facebook. But um, um, there's another girl. Her name is Kinga something. And I thought, wow, yeah. Kinga. What Kinga a great Anna. name. I wish my name. I wish my name was Kinga. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyways, um, and then we have Funky Al Medina, which, which, we, which I thought, I thought that you were taking that reference from the Tone Loke song, Funky yeah. Cold Medina, which you had no idea about. And that's an old that. rap artist here in the States. Check out Tone Loke, Funky Cold Medina. Yeah, I checked it. It's amazing. Yeah, like you should. We were actually trying to find the origin, you know, where it came from. It uh, that day, you know, Ryan goes, you know, thank you for coming. All you know, I'm reading this, you know, I'm reading his name. Thank you, Vickery, and he will like, mm -hmm. Al Medina, funky Al Medina. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, so he said it too. So Ryan said it too. Yeah, that's Ryan where it came from. Oh, that's great. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. It's a long time ago. Um, when uh, people were starting to get email, when email became a thing, um, everybody sort of had their email at what, like whatever, AOL.com was the, the, the email server, AOL America right. Online it was called, and people wouldn't really have their names. It wouldn't be your name, it would be Mike Fasano at AOL, it would be um, uh, Tiger Drummer, or, or, yeah, or yeah. Uh, you know, Spooky Mike, or whatever, or Spooky Drummer, or something. Um, you would never use your, your name for some reason. I, I, I don't know if people were afraid of this new technology, of this email thing, and they thought they, they, they shouldn't put their real name. Um, by the time I figured everything out, which, which was a few years after all that nonsense started, not nonsense, but where it changed with having emails, um, I just had Mike Fasano, and I don't know, for me, playing drums in a band and being a drummer and having a business and all that stuff, um, I thought it's best to just have my name. But I kind of wish I was Kinga, Mike. Yeah. You know, <laughs> or something cool like that. Right. Kinga, Kinga drums. Mike. Maybe I'll take Kinga drums on, on my alternate account. I should have a, it. Don't, it doesn't ever, I don't even have an alternate account. Everybody has alternate fake accounts. I don't even have that. <laughs> Anyways. Show me. Yeah. Hashtag Kinga Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Kinga I mean, drums. Uh, it's it's just like it's just like my name here in Brazil. My name is just one if with one C, but um, almost everyone that is outside of Brazil or you know America or Europe they, they say my name with two C's or with a K. Um, just because my Instagram account it's like Becca with the K, so but that's that's from when I, I was little. I thought like. Mm -hmm. Great. This name is very cool. I'm going to be cooler, you know, with this K, but not actually. It's just me, me making people confused about my name. Yeah. So, yeah, King it's of Mind is like, be very good. You know, it's funny. It's like it's, it's always hard to um, establish something. I mean, people call it branding. You have to sort of brand yourself. I mean, um, yeah. But yeah, it could be confusing. It's like the sooner you realize what your thing could be or should be, on a go with it. You know, it's like I remember to not to get weird, but I remember 
uh, my father was being such a jerk to me. I was thinking, I was really young. I was probably 21. I thought to myself, oh, maybe I'm going to change my, my name to my mother's maiden name, which would be Katarina. So it would be Mike Katarina instead of Mike Fasano. And because um, I was so pissed off at my dad for being such a dick. And um, I never changed it because I had already started doing stuff professionally as Mike Fasano. And I didn't want to, I knew back then it's not to con confuse it. But anyways, I don't have a cool name like Ryan Roxy. But uh, but I, it's, it's just Mike Fasano. It's me, it's oh, me and potatoes. It's spaghetti and meatballs. No, we love, we love Mike Fasano. It's, it's, it's right. spaghetti and meatballs. So I've never seen Fasano before. I swear to God. Like, your name is unique. Well, thank you, Rebecca. With the you know, we had a candy. We had a candy in <laughs> India. It it was called Solano. Solano. <laughs> wow. That's right. Close, close, but no cigar, as they say. Just turn <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right. So, yeah. uh, we also okay. Who's that? We got a guest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> He's just checking out if we are protect. <laughs> Maybe he wants to hide Mike. Maybe. <laughs> okay, I'm just wait a second. Okay, I just remember. I just remembered. Mike's cats were on a TV show, right? Yes, my cats were on Let's a TV show. Let's talk about that a bit. There's a show here that was on in the States called uh, My Cat from Hell. It's on a channel, uh, a network called Animal Planet. And there's a guy who does the show. His name is Jackson Galaxy. And um, we were right. having problems because we had um, rescued a cat from a lady who passed away. And then we had these alley cats that were, were in the alley that were, there was a, a group of them. And we uh, were going to uh, get them fixed so they wouldn't have more cats. So we took two of them in and got them fixed. And then where I live in Burbank, I live up in the hills and there's coyotes and uh, bobcats and um, deers and stuff like that. But the coyotes are sort of predators to cats. And these cats would probably live for a few years, but eventually probably get eaten by the coyotes. So we never put the two bonded brothers from the alley, as they say, the brothers from the alley back into the wild. We kept them as our own, but we had our one cat um, uh, one month before we got the, 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 the brothers and, um, the brothers were bonded and they were very interested in her and they were to attack her. So my wife reached out to the show. Oh, look at that. That's a beautiful kitty. Good kitty. Yeah. Blue it's eyes great... too. What, what's, what's that name? Juka. <laughs> Juka. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, so, um, so the girl cat, good kitty um uh was getting chased around and, and bullied by these boys and we thought that the problem my wife reached out to the show she sent a video when i was on tour they were interested we, we met with them um and we got on the show and the guy um really helped us jackson really helped us with their cats he saw that good kitty needed to be more confident so we did all these exercises and drills with her and and the boys um, sleeve and tiny dancer are the uh, the two boys, and um, uh, we we work it out. Now when she sees them, she hisses at them and goes at them. But they still sneak up on her and scare her, and she cowers. But when she has an eye on them, they don't they don't they don't mess with her anymore. So it was a really cool thing. So it's called um, it's the show is called My Cat from Hell. It's on Animal Planet. Um, our episode is called Good Kitty Bad Kitties. And uh, it's from like 2016. I'm going to you search it. And, um, uh, and also, our cats have an Instagram. We made an Instagram for them. It's called at Good Kitty Bad Kitties. So if you want to follow them or, or put it up in the link, either. Um, or it's on, it's on my page too, or my, you know, whatever. You can find it. If you're interested, if you like animals or if you like cats, I like cats. But we also have chickens too. My wife has three chickens, my neighbor has four. We get fresh That's eggs. That's right. My we call chickens. it Farm, yeah. farm Zano over here. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit about drums. You know, how did you find your sound? You know, uh, you're, you're playing Gretsch, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny is I'm constantly, when I work with guys in the studio, bands and producers and drummers, the different drummers, I'm always trying to help them find their sound uh, for the recording purposes. And um, it's weird. I don't know. I have a... Um, I, I have a, I, I, it's easy. I know how to tune. I don't know why I, it's so easy for me, but it's just something that I guess uh, is a gift I have. So I know how to tune drums. I can, because I play drums in a band, I can, um, I can uh, understand like a tuning range. If it's a ballad, sometimes you want to tune the snare drums a little bit deeper. Um, sometimes if it's a fast punk wrong song, you want to have a, the snare drum tighter and crackier to be, you know, so, so the note gets out of the way. Um, but I, I, uh, I'm always helping these guys and I've, I've been a part of a lot of records and I've worked with a lot of great drummers. Um, and I'm always helping them. And it's really funny because when I got into Tiger Army again in 2015, I kind of came out of, I was coming out of just playing mid medium tempo rock and roll stuff and tiger army sometimes has really fast stuff sometimes has really slow stuff some sometimes has really middle tempo that's really loud sometimes it has stuff that's very quiet so that's true i did a two we did a two-year tour and at the end of the two years i realized i needed to make some changes because uh george stipovic our, our bass player who plays upright bass there's so much low end there's so much um, of the, the slapping and tapping on his bass. And then there's a middle sound. He fills a lot up. And then Nick's, Nick, even though Nick is our one guitar player, he's got amazing Gretsch guitars and, and he's got this amazing amp setup. His his sound is ferocious and sometimes it's, it's, it's beautiful and pure and dainty and quiet and melodic, but sometimes it'll rip your head off. So I think my drums in the beginning, starting with Tiger Army, from what I had been playing, we're so sort of in the middle of meat and potatoes, and I think some things get lost here and there in the live show. All of these elements, a smaller snare drum that's gonna crack more and cut through the band and have range for cross stick and shuffles and all this stuff. But it took me, it took me seriously, prior to us recording the, the latest record, Retro Future, it took me this evolving um, of, of a lot of things. It's not just, oh, changing big sticks to small sticks or, um, dark crash symbols to bright crash symbols. Um, it, it's just evolution. If you make all of these little steps, the big picture of the painting will become more clear. And I was just, I, and I had to do this. this. And it was funny, I kept saying, this is what I do for everybody. It's the hardest thing when you can't just sit down. I can't, it's hard to just sit down and play because you're hearing one thing here, but it's, it's how does it sound with the band? So I, I did a lot of research and I evolved my sound. Um, and yes, I am playing Gretsch drums. I just started with them in, in, in 2019. And uh, what sucks is I ordered my drum set. It took nine months. I got it one month before we were to go on tour uh, this second time and then COVID-19 postponed it. So I have these beautiful drums. I'm dying to get out there and play and I can't play them yet. And, um, and because wow. we're in lockdown, I, I have a place to play. Uh, drums, but I, I'm not leaving the house because I'm, I'm I'm abiding by the rules because I want to flatten the curve of COVID-19. But I can't wait to get these drums on the road with Tiger Army as soon as things start going again. I have a beautiful new Gretsch kit, but um, and Gretsch is Gretsch is a great historic American drum company. I also play Zildjian cymbals. I've played for years. Um, I play Vic Firth drumsticks. Awesome. I play Revo drum heads. I have these really cool right. inner monitors. Um, uh, UE Pro in ear monitors, ultimate ears. Um, those are my companies that I work with, and, and that, that help me, help me. Right. Um, because you know, the funny thing is, is you know, I am always working at it. Like you, you know, I'm still, I'm looking to see what guys are doing. I, I when somebody puts an Instagram picture, I blow it up. If they do a video, I watch the video and I listen. Um, because I want to learn. I love drums and, and I don't know everything at all. And, and, and every situation is different. So I'm constantly evolving and I'm constantly trying. And, you know, I'm not the I'm not the best drummer in the world, but I fucking work at it. Sorry, I cuss. But I work at it. And I'm constantly working at my playing. I'm constantly working at my sound. And, and uh, I'm, I'm, but I love it. And that's the thing is if there's something that you love, it, it's not work. It's just something you work at. So anyways, I hope that answered, answered your question.
that's amazing that's amazing man. you know that's what inspires us to learn from you you know because anyone like like a lesson yourself they're always like we know nothing even though you you're like going backstage i mean on the stage like a drum machine like full power house and you're like i know nothing about drums i'm still trying to learn you know that's, that's really amazing i'm See, still you're still really trying. humble no i mean what would humble i mean it's like it's it's not being humble it's just being real i mean it's like there's so much out there and there's so much so it's so much more to learn and then and there's so much God, there's so many moving that's the thing with drums there's a lot of moving physical parts and there's so many elements and um it's great i mean i i I'm, like i said it's not work it's just it's interesting to me i'm still fascinated drums Drum saved me as a kid, you know, it was my, it was my escape. It was my way out. And, and now it's my life. And I've had a great life uh, doing it. And, and gosh, I, I feel like what sucks is we've, this portion that we're all on lockdown, that's, that's less of my life. I get to do drumming, you know what I mean? So yeah. I can't wait till we get back to some sort of normal and we can start playing again and doing stuff. Um, I, I miss the guys in Tiger Army. You know, like I said, we were literally one week away when we had to cancel. And, it, and we, we had a lot of great new songs to add to the set. It was going to be a great tour with the bands we were playing with. And it's just it's just one of those things. Now we're post postponed. The two kitties, that kid is, it's like that? The Instagram? I'm sorry, what? The Instagram. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, at good kitty bad. Oh, it's K-I-T-T-I-E-S. In America, kitties plural is I-E-S. Oh god! Wait. Close. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> fix it. <laughs> anyway, um, Amber, Dika, just say, uh, wait. How can I, how can I get Mike's autograph? Oh, <laughs> uh, Amber. And you know, Amber. Also, so she said, I like that background, Mike. I think you should stand there for a coffee talk, also. Oh well, you know. Uh -huh. oh. You know, I'm trying to bring a different element. I'm, I'm work. You know, everybody thinks I'm going to do my own talk show, and I have no desire. So I'm trying different areas. When I go on Ryan's in the trenches or Sunday morning guitar show, uh, I, I have another position. I sit at my drums. But yeah, well, thank you, Amber. I, I, uh, I, uh, I don't know. I will have to see. You know, I know that a lot of times, Amber, you're pissed at stuff, and I mean, should we give him this wonderful backdrop for his show? For him just to keep putting me backstage, hmm. <laughs> that's a thought. Anyways, yeah, Amber's great. Amber and I text back and forth during the show uh, when Stefan's going on his rages. Oh my God, the show, the show was so great yesterday because Stefan was trying not to cuss, and he was great for an hour. And then I think I cussed, and he just went ballistic. It was great. Yesterday's show was amazing. Anyways, sorry, it's funny. Yeah, uh I love you. <laughs> I love you, Amber. <laughs> um, just just to you to know, like you say for me that um, you were gonna put me on seven shows, right? So I I decided to do that the drawing that you said for me to do to to, to put on, and I did. Oh. Did you? <laughs> In fact, I did. Uh, <laughs> Woohoo! That is so cool. Check that is amazing. That you are such a great artist. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, but uh, when I, I, I finished this, uh, actually it's not finished, but yeah, I just painted it. I, sh I was like, oh my God, he's going to he's gonna say to me to, to go to go on the show and I don't have this this, this uh, finished. How am I going to do? Oh my God. Oh my God. And, we'll put it we'll put it tomorrow on the show. You know what I mean? No, if he lets no, me, we'll, no, we'll I'm, not, I'm not saying that you should put me. I'm not saying that. Oh. I'm just saying that I got like so nervous about it. And I had you know what? running. Yeah. No, yeah. that's cool. That's great. And that's how that's how we met is through this the show and, and you had done some, some photos of people and then you did one of me. I put it on the Instagram a while ago last yeah. week and it's it's really cool. You're a great artist. You know, the other thing I wanted to say to you as well, before I forget, um you were saying something uh when you guys were doing your little singing thing on Instagram Live, 
you and Al Medina were singing, and you were telling me that your mom was teaching you Brazilian music and you knew a couple of Brazilian songs, right? Yes. And you said you didn't much care for it, but when you got when you sang it, it sounds so great. Here, let me just tell you, I'm gonna just give you some advice. Okay. Learn as many of those songs that your mom's gonna teach you. I'll tell yeah. you why. It might not be cool for you right now, but if you start singing later on and start doing professional stuff, everybody's going to be Britney Spears or Billie Eilish or whoever the popular singer is. But having that in your repertoire will will make you stand out more than more than any of the other girls you're singing against or even guys having that. So if you can learn that from your mom, learn that. I'll tell you. And why I say that is when I told you guys you used to cruise ships and I played cha-chas and rumbas and waltzes and 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 uh, and swing and whatever. When I got off the cruise ships, when Matt got me and we were roommates, Matt's forum, and I was playing rock, I remember I had a roommate at the time. His name was David Hunter, and we played with this girl named Karen Fields or something. And David had said, "Oh yeah, my my, my friend Mike just came off of a cruise ship." Even though I wanted to be Tommy Lee and Bobby Blotzer, these these major rock drummers, or, or Stuart yeah. Cope, Copeland or Mickey Curry or whatever, all this girl in her head thought was, "Oh, he's too jazz. He's too jazz. He's not rock enough." And I and I got replaced in the in the, in this band, right? And so, but but fast forward to two thousand four. This was this was in uh, nineteen. Oh gosh, ninety nine or two thousand. Fast forward to two thousand four when I played on Ghost Tigers Rise. The reason, as I was tuning drums and working for for Nick on a few other records prior to me playing on this record, one of the reasons they asked me is they saw the swing, they saw the jazz, they saw the Latin, they heard it in my playing. It wasn't just punk rock because Tiger Army has these elements of swing jazz. Um, waltz not waltzes but uh you know cross stick and softer elements it's a rockabilly thing it's a psychabilly thing and um train beats and shuffles and nick had the vision to see that i could play rock but i could have this element of swing and an element of this cruise ship thing that i had and and there's so much of that stuff that i learned on the cruise ships that i if i didn't have that i wouldn't be in tiger army because i i wouldn't have that Today I wouldn't. I would have never played on the record in 2004, Ghost Tiger Red. So all I'm telling you is learn from your mom. Learn these songs. And yeah, learn whatever other ones you do. But learn because you will be that much more valuable to somebody that sees what you can do. Because everybody, you know what? A five-year-old could play or three-year-old. I see these drum videos that come to me. They play these songs and it's like these kids can play. Okay, great. Every... That's great. I'm happy the kids are doing it and playing these songs. But sticking out and having your own individuality, this stuff that your mom, this Brazilian music, you sounded great when you sang it, by the way. Um, and Thanks. you should teach Al Medina. Al Medina should learn this stuff because this yeah. stuff is only going to help you guys in the future. And, and I wanted to tell you that the other day, but I thought I'd save it for the show. So, so keep doing what you're doing. Learn all the stuff you want to learn or into, but learn this stuff. That stuff because that's really cool and it's going to help you later on. It's going to if you want to be a singer, you're an artist. You're you're an artist whether you sing or draw. You're an artist. You're creative. So um, so learn that stuff from from your mom uh, and yeah, well, learn as much of it as you can because you said it great. It was beautiful. Uh, thank you. Okay, um, also, I I try to learn as much as I can from my mom, uh, like about mm -hmm. songs and stuff like this because she. She's a very great singer, uh, like Brazilian singer, you know, like the songs that she sings fits very well with, with her voice. But sometimes when I sing Brazilian songs, that's why I say that I, I don't like so much to sing Brazilian songs. It's because sometimes it doesn't fit with me. Right. And, but there is some songs that I love that I, I, I listen to them like every day. Um, and actually, you should listen to this too because it's very good. Uh, and yeah, I mean, she she tries to teach me as much as uh, um, as she can about music because cool. she's a musician. My my father is a musician. My father plays guitar, and you know, uh, my mom plays drums and she sings and she plays cool. guitar too. So she, she's a 
she's amazing. She's my biggest inspiration uh, on this world. She and 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 my grandmother. Yeah. Well, well, that, there you go. So learn this stuff while you have the opportunity. Because I know this sounds crazy, but someday you're going to have kids, and and they're not going to want to learn these Brazilian songs, and they're not going to be as into it. And you're going to want them to learn like your mom wants you to learn and your grandma wants you to learn. It sounds great. I know it's, I, I could never think more than a year ahead in my life, even to this day, but, um, but it's only going to help you. Cause I'm telling you the stuff that I learned, all of these other styles that were not cool and not rock are, are why I'm in Tiger Army today. And, and I'm, I'm so lucky that I have that in my bag, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so anyways, so I'm just doing it. And, and and Al Medina, you should learn some of these songs too. You know what I mean. And 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 Ken, I mean, I know you're learning yeah. rock guitar, but but there's there's a whole there's all kinds of other stuff. I mean, that's the thing is like with the drums. Every day I'm learning. Every day I'm watching. Every day I'm seeing something. Every you know. So if you're passionate about it, then dive into a bunch of stuff. Obviously, you will. Like I was telling you, I'm inspired by like Stuart Copeland and all these guys, but I, I can't play like them. If I try to do one of their, their beats or their fills, I'm not going to sound like them, but I'm going to turn it around my own way and bring something out. So that that's just my my, my old guy experience advice for you guys. All of that you. means a lot. That means the world yeah, to us, man. Coming from you, I mean, <laughs> probably. You know, and the, coincidentally, even my father plays guitar. That's, that's cool. That's great. Huh? Yeah. You know what's funny is uh, my um, my dad my 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 grandfather, uh, Michele Caterina, Caterina, he played a little mandolin. He pl uh, he played a little bit of because uh, uh, he's from Italy, um, Bari, Italy, Southern Italy. Um, uh, played mandolin. Played a little guitar. He was a prisoner of war and. That's what saved him from getting from getting treated like a prisoner. He entertained the the, the, the guards, the, the, you know, uh, do, doing a, it. He's also an artist too. He's also a painter and 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 very right. talented guy. I can't draw uh, anything, but um, so but my father and my father's side of the family. This this is this grandfather is my mother's side of the family. He um, maybe th 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 there's a little music there, but uh, but there's no music in my family, so I didn't have a father to uh, to you know whatever um, get that down. I just it's something that drums resonated me resonated with me more than guitar or piano. Um, it just seemed like it was four limbs versus ten fingers on a piano or a guitar or a saxophone um, or or whatever. So drums just made sense to me. And I'm still pursuing to be, I'm still pursuing to play better, to learn more, um, to, to get a better sound. Um, I, I'm still pursuing, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an endless pursuit, you know what I mean? But I'm gonna stay on this path. Or I might go off on another path to see where that takes me. But sometimes when paths sort of cross each other again, you sort of know you're going the right way. So if that, if that, helps you know what i've i've learned so much through this talk you know whatever we've had like an hour it, it has been not only it has been fun but it has been such a learning experience for me and i'm sure for the other two hosts too i yes. mean what do you think right mm -hmm, yeah, yeah so, it, it'll be okay. great i'm glad i can uh, share you know i mean See, that's the most, your mom, Becca, is sharing Brazilian music with you. If I, if, you know, you ask me a question, I can, it makes me remember something or something I know about that I can, sh I, I, I'm happy to share. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about, especially now. I mean, there's so many more people sharing, artists sharing from their living room and sharing from, from, you know, it's, you can get one-on-one. -on -one. I would, you know, wouldn't be surprised, you know, the, the guests after me that you will have, you know, um, uh, you know, with your show, you know, and, and, and it'll be great to see how your show evolves as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Uh, I'm going to send you some Brazilian songs for you to to, to see a little bit of our, our future. Uh, and it, it's 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 beautiful the way they sing, the way uh, they, the words, you know. I know you won't understand what they are saying, of course, but... Uh, for us, it's like, 
you feel something from it, right? Yes. I, I will yes. feel something, right? Yes. Um, That's the best music. Like, That's the best art is when when it impacts you. It could yes. mean something for so many different people, but how it affects you, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, sometimes even the Brazilian people can't understand what the Brazilian songs are saying because they just use so many weird uh, uh, words like together, you know, it's it's just strange, but that makes sense in in the same way. I I really don't know how to explain the the Brazilian song, the, this our culture. You know, like we have funk. Funk, it's like <clears throat> how can I say? It's it's a style of song that you can dance a lot. Like, but most of it, you have to shake your butt. <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. <laughs> And, and 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 it's cool yeah it's cool to dance uh on parties and stuff like that yeah um the mpb that is the one my mom teaches me that is popular brazilian music um there's a share and a lot of stuff you know it's it's just great that's what i i like about my my country the, the, cool you know Music here, music it's alive. It's it's just incredible. And, and Ken, Indian music's incredible too. And, and I'm sure there's amazing Bosnian music. You know what I mean? Yeah, send me links to stuff. I'd love to check it out. You should ask your mom if she's ever heard of a Brazilian singer called Cesare Evora. Cesare Evora. It's like C E S A R E Evora. E V O R A. She's passed away now but i got turned on to her 20 years ago i'm just amazed by her she's her, her, I, her I, voice is incredible i don't know if i know this but probably my mom knows but i yeah. i really don't and you know uh caetano veloso or i don't tom jobim uh do you know the, the girl from Ipanema, the song? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. But yes, I do know. Yes. Yeah. Incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, he, he just passed away uh, last year. What? He just passed away last year, I believe. I guess so. I don't remember. I know that he passed away, but I don't remember when. But yeah. Yeah. Sorry, my phone's ringing. Yeah. Uh, the, the landline. That's all right. Answered anyway. You know what? You know what? We're gonna wrap it up, and uh, we're gonna let Mike off. You know, uh, uh, after one or two questions, I guess. Uh, and one of the question is uh, continuing about the thing we were talking about uh, last night. That is Johnny Depp. You're <laughs> gonna tell us something about your Japanese friend. Uh -oh. So are we going to talk about it now or are we going to keep it for some other time? You know, your choice. Okay. Well, 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 I've got a couple of Johnny Depp things and we should keep it for another time because um, I'll just tease you with this. So Matt Sorum was playing in Hollywood Vampires with Johnny yeah. Depp. Matt called me one day and said, I need to get a double bass drum pedal. Uh, can you bring me a double bass drum pedal? I'm doing a recording. I'm at Johnny Depp's studio in Hollywood. Can you bring me one? Johnny Depp owns a street of houses in Hollywood. There's like five houses. I went to the wrong house where the studio wasn't. The gates opened and it looked like Disneyland. It had a waterfall. It had this stuff and there was a big security guy. Really. Really cool looking guy, looked like a movie star. And he said, we've been expecting you, but the studio is across the street at this house. <laughs> I went into this wow. studio, I set up, I tuned some drums, I brought this pedal. And uh, and so I was in Johnny, and I saw Johnny, and I have another Johnny Depp story, but yes. And, and, and for, for all of the people that know me and don't know you guys, you, you two girls are nuts about Johnny Depp. And I don't, absolutely nuts and like your stage name your screen name is Johnny Depp um Al Medina on on Instagram yeah. but um, yeah. I also have a friend named I also Joker have a fan was... page too of Johnny Depp so I'm not gonna say okay. anything that's, that's <laughs> not I don't understand I wonder if I ever will get a Mike Fasano fan page um anyways um but uh 
But anyway, maybe so my friend, I have a Japanese friend. Will come up. I don't know. Maybe maybe a front page of Mike Fazano will come up. I don't know. Who knows? Right? right? Well, but, after uh, the show, it's definitely going to come up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, but, I also, but I also do have a friend I want to introduce you guys to. Um, her name is Shoko Miriyuma. And in my phone, her, I put Shokio, Shoko Miriyuma, hashtag, not hashtag, uh, hyphen, Depp, because she's nuts about Johnny Depp. Yeah. Absolutely nuts. And she's from Japan. Whoa. She lives here in America. She works at my friend Sushi Bar, Chiba, in North Hollywood, which is amazing. Um, but uh, Shoko uh, is nuts about it. I should put you on the show. She should be on one of your chats just amongst yourselves, not even broadcast about Johnny. She's great. She's super shy but she's because she's Japanese, but she's great. She's nuts about him. Anyways, that's, that's it. But Did no, I have some Johnny Depp, Depp connections. Meaning, meaning I've been around him. I don't know him. But he does own a street of several houses in, in, in. Yeah. Oh I can't even imagine right. this. I mean I've got yeah, to think about Johnny Depp that I, I like I'm nuts about him right now, much more from December to 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 now. It's because he just sent me a message in December. So I got okay. crazy. I mean I didn't sleep. So yeah, this is gonna be to another time. Another okay. time. <laughs> So thank you so much, Mike, for yes, being that's on been amazing. Remember, um, check out uh, Retro Future. Yes. It's the record. Yes, that is cool. definitely. Wait. You can TigerArmy.com. Yes. Any yeah. you guys want to see where it all started that for me at Tiger Army? It's um, it's uh, the Ghost Tigers Rise record. Um, right. And then uh, there's this really cool check EP we did, The Dark Paradise, with the uh, Lana Del Rey um, cover on it. Uh, that we had put right. out a couple years ago. We're going to share that. Check out TigerArmy.com. Yeah. Definitely. Find, uh, sure. find me on, on Instagram and direct message and, and yes. say hi. Yeah. And thank you so much for taking your time out for us and coming on. And to be very honest, this is our very first show and with no script at all, no experience at all. We've done it. And yes, obviously, uh, Ryan and Stephen were the uh, inspiration behind this and what we literally came up with this like in two days and uh, and we got your support. So we are really, really thankful to you, man. Yes. So, thanks a lot yes. and you're such an inspiration. Be what you are, man. You're amazing. Well, I'm inspired. I'm inspired by you guys because you you guys are the youth. You guys are the future. And 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 you know the thing about it is, I've had some. I remember, remember growing up. I had cool, like old old friends, like older guys, like you know, and and, and even women. That they're just so cool. It, it, either either you have, you've got something in common with somebody, or or you. You don't you know what I mean? And 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 if you've got something, it doesn't matter what your age is. It doesn't matter um, what your ethnicity is, what your um, sexual preference or 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 choice of eating meat or not eating meat. If right. you have a, a bond with somebody, you have a bond with somebody, and somebody, and, and and you can learn from so many people. So that's yeah. true. That's all that's I got true. for you. I got really embarrassed Thank when so I just made today like, oh. See that little girls with this old guy, their parents are gonna kill you. <laughs> yeah. Dude, my grandmother is like supporting me so much, and all my family is watching this right now. My mom, my dad, everyone. Cool. So everyone's psyched up right now. So <laughs> Don't one, last one last question. One last question. Mike, did you have fun? <laughs> I had a great time. This was good. It was fun. Hey, you know what's funny is uh, you know, I had been growing out my uh my uh, lockdown beard and and uh, and all this stuff, and then I and I thought to myself, this is that I saw your flyer for the show, show number one. I saw myself on the camera, you know, going, oh man, I better I better shave and tighten it up, and and uh, thanks for bringing me back to life for a little while. And, uh, <laughs> hey, that's, that's and my wife is happy man. that I shaved my my, my, my beard, <laughs> but I've been cutting my hair by good. myself too. I've done two haircuts by myself, and I haven't managed no. to fuck it up. Oh, sorry, screwed up too much. But uh, don't worry. Anyway. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> We're not right. that well, young. Hey, thanks a lot for having me. I, I thank thanks for having me. I was watching your shit. Uh, 
Thanks for having us. Thanks to the viewers. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thanks a lot, all, for watching. See you on hey, something, the something we used to something we used to say on the cruise ship. On the yeah. cruise ship, the Italian ciao for now. Ciao for ciao now. For now. Yeah, ciao, ciao for, for now. now. <laughs> there you go. Okay, okay. Bye bye guys. Bye. Uh, see, see, you. Ya. see you. Yeah, that's it.